Welcome back. You know, of all the many questions that I get daily uh, regarding firearms, and they range from ballistic questions to, you know, calibers and, and uh, scopes and all sorts of things, one of the more popular questions I uh, receive have to do with cleaning, cleaning solvents, cleaning oils, uh, how to clean guns, and what's the best products to use and the best methods and so forth and so on. So I've got a very dirty uh, Browning Maxis here that uh, I was out shooting just a little while ago. And um, let's take it over the bench and we'll go through the process of cleaning up this gun. Maybe it'll help you out. Now don't be stymied over all the uh, items you see on the bench here. Very first thing, and I probably neglected to uh, talk about this in previous cleaning videos, you know, when you're cleaning a gun, uh, you've got to make a mess, uh, and you, you've got to contain that mess. Even if, it's, uh, even if it's in your basement like I'm in right now, I don't have to worry too much about spattering on uh, the floor and things like that. But if I don't have something on my clothes, I'm going to have a real mess. Take note of this, um, this cover, this, this old diaper, for instance. Now, this staining is just from cleaning firearms. There's something about the uh, there's something about the the mess that uh, is made by uh, various solvents and oils and everything when they get together with uh, gunpowder and carbon. Uh, they really create an indelible mess that you can't get out of clothes. So don't wear your best shirt and your best uh, you know your best t-shirts and all that stuff when you're cleaning guns. And also too, you might want to you know fashion yourself a uh, over the end of your muzzle, if you want, you can just cut a hole in a uh, milk bottle, you know, even just with a wax cardboard cart and cut a hole in the end of it and just drape it over the end of your barrel so that when your when you brush uh, emits from the end, it doesn't create a spatter. Uh, you know, all, all brushes spatter, but there's something about the way these, these long bristles hurl uh, droplets a long way and you can uh, really make a mess with one, just one uh, time through that barrel you can really destroy uh, you know your local surroundings so let me talk about uh, some of the things as I'm getting my apron on here Let, let's talk about some of the things that you see here and um, maybe I can help you figure out uh, what's best for you now <clears throat> through the years you know one of the more popular one of the more popular solvents has been Hoppy's number nine this was invented around 1903. Now, if 1903 was the year that uh, the Wright brothers flew the Kitty Hawk, uh, you know, it flew the first airplane at Kitty Hawk. You know, it's 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 an old, it's a very good solvent. It has a very nostalgic uh, odor to it. I love the smell. It brings me back to my youth when my dad used to clean guns way way back when I was about oh five or six years old. I can remember him using this stuff. So it has that. It has that. Uh, Fabulous smell with some people. A few people don't like it. Uh, I see in reviews, but you know, really, a lot of people are attracted by that, and that's fine. It's a kerosene-based solvent, and as a kerosene-based solvent uh, with a little bit of ammonia in it and a little bit of banana oil for that odor, and a couple of other ingredients. I think it has some alcohol in it. And remember, alcohol is usually it's it's uh, added to a concoction to allow the mixing of the other components. So um, it, it has fair, fairly common ingredients. Uh, you know, remember that marketing is the biggest issue. Mr. Hoppy's put on the bottle here, uh, gun bore cleaner. Uh, it could have said saw blade cleaner. It could have said uh, engine cleaner. It could have said any number of things. Just because he put gun bore cleaner on it does not mean it's only for guns. And conversely, it means that a lot of solvents that are made will work just as well as Hoppy's number nine. About three decades after Mr. Hoppy's invented that um, that product, there was a guy by the name of Stoddard who invented uh, mineral spirits. Mineral spirits was a vast improvement over previous petroleum-based solvents in that, for one thing, it, it had uh, it was cleaner. It didn't leave it didn't leave a, a kind of a varnish residue when it dried, like some uh, kerosene-based cleaners will. Uh, it had it had a lot of good properties. It expanded the range of things that it could clean way beyond the things that were uh, cleaned with uh, simply uh, kerosene-based 
cleaners, kerosene-based, and a lot of people would, you know, su substitute uh, any kind of petroleum. But this this widely expanded the range of things, including the fact that it could be used to uh, thin paints. So it had a, a very diversified uh, audience, and it could be sold to any number of people. So uh, whether it be painters or, or engine mechanics, uh, you know, anybody who was cleaning their guns and things like that. And it was not marketed as a gun solvent. However, there were many of clever, many clever people who realized that it cleaned guns so well that they simply repackaged it and they put gun cleaner on it, maybe added some coloring, uh, colorant to it or some uh, odor uh, that would change its uh, smell from uh, common uh, paint cleaner and things like that. So be very wary of that and be very careful of the fact that, you know, marketing can oftentimes reduce uh, the cost. You know, when, when, you buy, when you buy paint thinner in a gallon uh, in a gallon container and it's reduced to a small bottle that you buy at the gun shop that's exactly the same thing with a different with a different label on it they they can charge you more for this than they would charge for this at the hardware store that's the way that's the way things work uh, you know whether it's whether they're repackaging rice or cornflakes or whatever you know you buy in bulk and you repackage it and then you you uh, bump the price up so this stuff works terrific. Now this is the original type of formulation. It's a um, clear liquid. Uh, it's it's uh, clear as water, um, and that's that's in this bottle here. Uh, there's been recently this uh, this uh, version of it here is very green. It doesn't have it doesn't have any of the uh, strong uh, it doesn't have any of the strong odor component that uh, the uh, mineral spirits previously had it's non-volatile so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a, a fire hazard you know using it in your house uh, there's a lot of it's it's better if it gets into your you know groundwater uh, it doesn't create a it doesn't create a problem with that so you know it, there's there's many reasons why uh, this is it's it's easier to use and I can keep it on my workbench without it evaporating so and it will continue to work even when it's dirty. This is the color of the new stuff that I have here. It's a it's a milky white. Uh, you can see it right here. It's just a it's just a white uh, solvent. I can keep that on my workbench without worrying that it's uh, gonna you know have a flash ignition problem. And I can use that to just drop parts in with this. I have a dog bowl here with a with a basket. I can throw small parts in for my AR-15 and recover them and clean them up nicely. So. I like it for that reason, and believe it or not, it, it cleans at least as good, if not better, than the previous uh, clear stuff. So, you know, keep all those things in mind. Now, when it comes to oils, I did a recent video on cleaning the AR-15, and cleaning the AR-15, uh, is it presents a certain problem with regard to high temperature gases emitting just uh, at the uh, at the bolt and carrier uh, there's I've never found a product that works as well as LSA uh, for that for that reason and you can see I did a little repackaging myself just to work at the bench because I don't want to I don't want to this, this stuff is rare it's hard to find so I don't want to end up spilling this and uh, losing my investment of ten dollars that I spent on it uh, it's not the ten dollars, but it's the it's the replacement. Um, the same thing with this. This is mineral oil. Mineral oil is what I use for ninety nine percent of all my uh, gun uh, for all my gun purposes to wipe down the gun with uh, a cotton flannel cloth. This is simply a twenty inch square cotton flannel cloth that I that I made up. I think I've shown that to you before, um, and just simply uh, treated it with some plain uh, USP mineral oil. You get this at the at the drugstore or, or in the pharmaceutical aisle of your supermarket. This stuff works for virtually every uh, gun use uh, under the sun, with the exception of those high temperature situations that you have with the uh, AR-15 bolt, the M16 bolt and carrier. And it's also very good, I'll, we'll be showing you, uh, the the gas the gas system inside these shotguns also can get uh, pretty dirty and uh, require some protection from 
uh, those high temperatures, which LSA I find is also very, very good for. But I don't use it on the whole gun. There's no, there, you know, there's no need to waste that expensive product, that rare product on uh, everything on the gun, and it's not, it's, it's not necessary to lubricate various parts. So uh, this is, this is nothing but clear mineral oil. This is the way Hoppy's packaged it. They simply took clear mineral oil. Uh, and, and packaged it in their orange bottle and they charge more for this than I pay for this same exact product So that's the way it works. I'm just trying to bring you up to speed on that CLP I have it out here. I, I stopped using CLP quite a long time ago uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't last that long. It's, it's more of a cleaner than it is a lubricant uh, it, it doesn't you know if I'm cleaning something I certainly can buy a lot more of this uh, this this here costs less than this little bottle of CLP, so I simply clean with this, lubricate with a little bit of uh, mineral oil to protect my uh, firearms, and that's all I need to do. So I'm going to take you down through the rest of the stuff that we need to clean with. Uh, this cleaning rod right here, this is very, very uh, special to me. This was uh, the same cleaning rod that my dad used when he was, believe it or not, when he was probably about 16 years old is when he bought this, and he'd been, you know, he was cleaning his shotguns with this when I was a, a, a youngster. And, uh, you know, I end up with it now, and it's a, it's a very special thing. So I keep it always, and uh, it's just one of those things that regardless of how modern things are, you know, a good cleaning rod is still going to work. Now I have replaced the, uh, the, the ferrules. I had, to, uh, I had to cement on with some epoxy because they were actually starting to get loose. But it's still the same uh, machinery. Now you need to have... Uh, if you're using a cleaning rod, you need to have some uh, bronze bristle cleaning brushes. As I've said before, bronze bristles is the only way to go. You don't want to be using plastic bristles, nylon bristles, because they just simply don't work well enough to scrub. Uh, you, In a shotgun bore, you're going to get some uh, plastic residue from the plastic shot cups uh, that, that will cause streaking inside the barrel. And on a hot barrel, uh, you know, especially with a target shotgun that you've, or duck gun where you've shot many rounds, uh, you, you want to be able to aggressively get at that plastic. And this is the bronze bristles will work better than anything else. Um, I got this for Christmas one time. This is a, this is like that other brush. Uh, to the 10th power, I think, you know, there's just a lot of bristles there. It speeds up the process a little bit, and this is one of those specialty items that you can get, uh, you know, in the in the uh, glossy uh, catalogs for, you know, highbrow shotgun shooters and things like that. If you, you know, if, if you want to treat yourself to something like that, it works a little bit better. A lot of brass there. It's just, a, it's, it's one of those special things that you can put inside a, a fancy cleaning box, um, but it's not necessary. Very important to have a good bore mop. I've been using this same bore mop for probably 30, 30 or more years. Uh, they just last for a long time. They just they cleanse themselves and, and re-dirty themselves, but they, they, they perform the simple function of swabbing out 90% uh, of the uh, stuff inside the bore. Once you get it swabbed out, then you can, then you can attack it with uh, the, the bronze brush to uh, get out the final residue. And also, too, it'll mop out uh, stuff afterwards and before you clean it up. And we'll go through that whole process. Always good to have, uh, always good to have an M16 brush. By the way, you know, these do work better uh, than toothbrushes. Toothbrushes have a tendency to fray uh, very, very quickly when you're using them on machinery. Uh, this this one here I've had for a long, long time in it, and it just it just stays in good shape. So they're well worth it. They were a good uh, invention for the government. Um, and to have a to have a mallet is something you may need to have for your shotgun to take it apart, as we'll go through it. Um, you may need to have uh, a good uh, drift uh, suitable size. Uh, drift punch, um, you know, and and this don't don't snicker and don't sneer and don't don't bother writing me uh, nasty grams. You can use a six penny nail. You know, this this here is just a simple. In fact, this is uh, this is smaller than a six penny, uh, but you can use a simple six penny nail. And the reason why you can is because on shotgun rivets, uh, the the shotgun has these. It has these pins right here, and you can see they have a. If you can see where. In the middle of that pin, there's a dimple. And now these pins are hardened pins. These cross pins are very hardened pins. 
and where a, a, a drift punch is also a hardened steel article that doesn't go inside that dimple, this nail will, and it's a mild steel. That's the nice thing because it's, it's a, just about as mild as a brass uh, drift rod. So you can place that inside those uh, dimples and they won't drift off and they won't, they won't cause a scar on your gun. So uh, rather than having a, uh, a drift punch that might slide off and, and, and rake across your fine finish, this actually works pretty good. So again, don't snicker and sneer. Sometimes, you know, um, field expedience is what I learned in the Army and uh, carried it into the rest of my life. Use what works, uh, what, whatever you have available. Cleaning patches, uh, you need to have you need to have some good uh, cotton flannel cleaning patches for your shotgun, just like you do for any other firearm. So, <clears throat> to reduce it to uh, to reduce it to the primary things that you need to have, if you're cleaning an automatic shotgun, auto loading shotgun. When I say automatic, please, I'm not talking about full automatic. Automatic was a term that was used generically for many, many, many years before all of a sudden people started getting hypersensitive about, oh, is it an automatic or is it a semi-automatic? We, we're talking about auto-loading for the most part in sporting firearms, so don't worry about it. Um, to reduce it to the simple things that you need to have, the cloth, the mineral spirits, and the oil, and perhaps LSA. It's not entirely necessary. If you can't get LSA, don't worry about it. Uh, plain mineral oil will work just fine. Uh, and, and your other cleaning components. Now, I will bring up the fact that there is a wonderful, wonderful invention, which really, it's, it's not, not anything new. Uh, you know, when I had a clarinet when I was a kid, uh, you know, you used the same sort of article. It was a, it was a simply a, a plumb bob uh, that you that you drop down the that you drop down the clarinet, or if you had a saxophone or whatever you had, you dropped a plumb bob down that with a string, and you pulled uh, you you pulled a swab through. Well, that's exactly what uh, this this thing is here, except it incorporates you know it's a it it's a fuzzy it's a fuzzy uh, starting uh, point that you can put a little bit of uh, cleaning material on. Uh, it's got some it's got some bronze bristle brushes incorporated into the uh, fabric here and the rest of it's just simply a, a double uh, a double thickness very very uh, thick roving of uh, woven material and you know you can if you want you can put a few drops of uh, you can put a few drops of uh, mineral spirits on the end of this so as it, as it passes through it, it cleans scrubs uh, dries and then finally oils in one pass and they do work. They do work. The only thing is that, you know, again, I like to push a rod down through the barrel because uh, the cleaning rod just gives you a little bit more leverage. It's very difficult to pull this through sometimes. You know, uh, you can, you, you have to wear, for many shotguns, you'll have to wear a, a, a glove to really get a hold of that cord to pull it through. Okay, again, this is a Maxis, Browning Maxis, so adapt uh, whatever I'm doing to your particular uh, shotgun. Uh, with the Maxis now, it's, sometimes people find it very difficult to uh, remove this forend, and it's actually a very simple procedure because it doesn't have it doesn't have a screw-on cap, so it can be done very quickly. But what you have to do is it, there's a spring there's a spring in there that you have to relieve, just like you know with the old steering wheel, you had to pull the steering wheel back in order to turn the key. So you have to you have to pull the you have to pull the stock back push the button up forward and then lift this lever. And when you lift that lever, very simple, it just slides right off. Now the forend uh, will collect a lot of, that'll collect a lot of dirt. You can see it's probably, uh, I'm not sure if the lighting is showing that up, but up inside, up inside this area here, the gases uh, flow around. So that'll get dirty, so we want to clean that up. The uh, the barrel uh, must be removed by, and again, and you know this this shotgun was checked and cleared before I even proceeded with this. Uh, but you have to re return the bolt uh, back, and that will relieve the uh, barrel. And then just slide it straight forward carefully so that you're not uh, scuffing up your bluing. And once you've got the barrel off, be careful when you 
handle your shotgun tube because you know it's easy to knock off that front sight. I've seen a lot of front sights that go by the wayside. Now you can see here how you got a lot of gas. You got a lot of gas scorching and uh, residue on that on that uh, gas sleeve. The gas rings are all with with the Maxis. They're all uh, integral, so you don't have several different parts. Sometimes you have sometimes you have a stacking of di uh, different uh, rings and and uh, gaskets and whatever. Uh, but in this in this Maxis, it's nice. It just comes off as one unit. It's all it's all unitized construction. Everything is inside. And what I'm going to do with that, you can see the mess that is. It's got some uh, LSA on it. It's got some scorching. I'm going to put that right in my cleaning basket back here and just let it just let it soak. I can add a little bit more solvent to that. We clean that up. Uh, you want to take off this. You want to take off this uh, any other parts. In this case it's just one spring. So I'll, I'll throw that in the basket. All right, the first thing we must do is to uh, remove the bolt. So hold on to the hold on to the bolt handle and depress the bolt release. Let it slide forward slowly and keep that keep your thumb depressed on that until it clears the uh, until it clears the front of the receiver. Don't let that fly forward because you can really crack your receiver if you allow that bolt handle to slam into it. To remove the to remove the bolt, don't try to just pull it out because you're going to find a lot of resistance. It's very difficult. You'll be you know you'll end up across the room with the thing. Uh, instead, pinch top and bottom. You notice it's it's, it's curved like a, it's curved like a uh, elliptical bolt. Just squeeze it with your thumb and forefinger, and that will allow it to just simply pull free. And in other words, you're using you're using the thickness of your thumb and forefinger as a as leverage to work on it. It's a little bit more difficult with this one because I've got this I've got this birchwood casey uh, bracket for my uh, shell catcher on here, so it really gets in in the way. But that's how you remove that bolt handle. Uh, just set that aside. Allow the bolt to just slide forward and come out, and that's it. Now this is. This, this operating rod right here, uh, that just stays on with the Maxis. You don't have to take that off. The uh, bolt is a two-piece. It's got two major component sections, their assemblies. So just simply uh, take them apart. You can throw those in the solvent if you want to, uh, and that'll, that'll clean them up. Uh, to be very honest with you, there's not an awful lot of soot and carbon here, and this is one of the reasons why I don't use a lot of oil on my guns, because, uh, you know... I've shot an awful lot of uh, rounds with this shotgun. This goes everywhere I go in the fall. Uh, this is this is uh, I, I use it a lot at the uh, skeet range, trap range to keep my hand in. And you notice there's just some burnishing on th this burnishing would occur anyway. This is just the uh, parts gliding together and causes the the buffing up of the uh, parkerizing the phosphated surface. So there's no wear and tear going on here. This is extremely hard. They're all hardened parts, so. You don't even really have to throw that in the bath, but I will, uh, just to let it soak away. Now the first thing I'll do is take just a rag, uh, just a just a dirty a rag that I don't mind to get completely dirty. I like to use I I like to use big uh, cloths, you know, old uh, old dish towels and things like that. I kind of got a I got a clue from watching. Uh, maids work in uh, you know h hotels and things like that they they have stacks of these things they just carry a lot of rags with them they get a lot of cleaning done with the minimum of work because they let the fabric do the work for them that's their working tool so to clean this to clean this magazine tube up which is all uh, filthy dirty from carbon uh, I'll just I'll just dunk it in that solution in that bath and wipe it uh, and you notice that you know I'm not going through any cleaning patches this way. I can throw this I can throw this into the you know laundry every now and then with uh, and that's it. It cleans it right up. And the other end of it is dry. I don't have to use up any patches on that. I just did it all in one in one simple motion. So we got we got the uh, tube cleaned up just as swiftly as that. And that you can see there's some permanent staining on the uh, on the on the tube here and that's from the that's from the many uh, hundreds of rounds that have been fired with this gun that's actually just uh, 
uh, where the stainless steel had become uh, tattooed with a, a scorch. The, the same as a uh, stainless steel revolver, the face of the cylinder will get that blackening. It's not any harmful uh, issue whatsoever. So, got that cleaned up. You will find that there's not an awful lot of carbon inside the receiver because the barrel itself extends extends back through and protects the receiver for 90% uh, of uh, any uh, any issues at all. Now we want to take the we want to take this um, trigger housing off the trigger assembly, and uh, you might call it the fire control mechanism. We're just going to remove that. Now I told you that I told you I like to use the the tool that works best, uh, not necessarily the fanciest tool, but the one that works best. Now I can just simply uh, push this straight forward. It doesn't require a hammer. Yours might require a hammer, uh, but you can just simply push that pin straight out, and same thing here. And this is mild steel. I'll say that again. So it's not. It's it's softer than the actual. It's softer than the actual pin itself. If you want, you know, you can you can just simply take a um, stone. And if you're concerned about if you're concerned about marring your pin or anything like that, you can just simply blunt the point with a uh, India stone and make yourself a nice little nice little tool. Take the edges off it and everything. But you know, it works works nicely, and you don't have to go and spend money on buying something that uh, has just a single purpose like that. Once I've got that trigger mechanism uh, detached, just simply slide it out. Uh, you know, sometimes some firearms require that it goes in from the front and slides into the back uh, second, or may, may go in the other way, but uh, with the Browning Maxis and many others, it just simply drops straight down. My wife has a Browning Silver, and uh, it's it's very much the same in most respects as this gun, with a few differences. Uh, make sure that your safety is engaged. Make sure your safety is is uh, on, because if you if you have the safety off and you accidentally pull that trigger, you could permanently damage your uh, this this lightweight this lightweight structure here. It's very very easy to uh, easy to wipe out that uh, to crack uh, or damage your. Uh, aluminum uh, fire control mechanism and you may it's, some firearms may be made of uh, nylon a Delrin type of material as you can see it's very very clean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put that into my solution there's absolutely no need of getting this all uh, wet and then having to dry it off <clears throat> there's nothing to clean uh, I can take I can take my I can take my rag if I want and I can you know wipe inside here. This is this is not this is not carbon, that's just simply parkerizing which has still got that nice uh, haze. Uh, I can wipe it down uh, to my heart's content, but there's nothing to take off. It's a very, very clean article. So I'll just leave it as is. Yeah, you know, I want you to remember to just simply eyeball your stuff. You don't have to clean that which is not dirty. It's as simple as that. Um, inspect your inspect your receiver. Uh, see if there's anything that requires cleaning out. If it does uh, just attend to it uh, with a minimum of effort and grief. Uh, now I just used I just used that inside the receiver, and I'm not picking up any dirt whatsoever. So uh, it's obviously quite clean. This is an aluminum receiver. It's a hardened aluminum receiver, so uh, it requires no it requires no lubrication at all. Please, please don't be spraying this with uh, oils and lubricants and things because you're doing absolutely nothing beneficial for the firearm except providing a a nesting place for uh, dirt and and uh, you know stuff that shouldn't be on your gun. So just leave it as is. It's it's an entirely it's an entirely harmless thing to leave this uh, without lubrication. Now if you have if you happen to have a uh, steel receiver, uh, yes, you can apply a light coat of oil with this oiled cloth that I was talking about. And for those of you who have not seen this, this is nothing more than a Cotton flannel, heavy cotton flannel, nothing, no other material, please, no, no nylons or anything like that. But cotton flannel, and it's cut to 20, a 20-inch 20 square, 
uh, from the uh, yard goods store. Have the have the clerk at the yard goods store cut it with uh, pinking shears to leave this sawtooth design on the edge. That'll prevent it from uh, raveling all the threads off of it. And you know, put a few tablespoons of uh, mineral oil on it. Uh, squeeze it, ring it through, and uh, put it in a put it in a heavy duty freezer bag, and you'll have a good uh, cleaning cloth for years to come. And you can make them for Christmas gifts or something, or for birthday presents. Um, now you can you can just wipe down if you have a, a steel a steel receiver you can wipe down the uh, the part with that. Don't use this to clean you know where you have any dirt. Make sure you clean things out first before you get dirt on this because this is going to be your special uh, cleaning uh, I, I should say oiling rag. So you can wipe down any parts with that. That's applying sufficient lubrication now for for virtually any mechanical need within the gun. Okay, let's go back to our let's go back to our uh, bath here and see how this is going. This is this has just been sitting here. I haven't touched it uh, at all. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the uh, carrier. This is the bolt carrier for uh, this Browning Maxis, and just use my towel, wipe things up really good. I I I'm constantly laundering these. Uh, I shouldn't say I'm laundering them. I'm, I'm giving them to my bride, and she, you know, she puts them all together in one, in one batch because uh, she doesn't want to include them naturally with the regular clothes. <clears throat> but so we just simply clean that up and dry it. Set that aside. Uh, take out the, take out the bolt. Same thing. Uh, now, if you have, if you have any, if you have any. Uh, accumulated uh, grit or carbon or on there or something just just take to it with your uh, M16 brush wipe this down really good get all that get all that solvent off the solvent is like I say it's it this is a very very um, low odor you really don't smell this at all and uh, it doesn't have that paintbrush smell uh, works wonderfully cuts right into the carbon um, and I'll show you how much it cuts into that carbon and uh, following in a hurry here this um, take that out this has only been sitting in here you know I showed you I showed you at the beginning of the video how dirty that was that's just been sitting in here and I know no agitation no nothing uh, just by just by uh, simple immersion uh, that is that has really virtually got it a hundred percent clean I can I can take the toothbrush and and if I see anything that's uh, but anything on there is just loose particulate matter at this point it's reduced it to uh, that dirt and junk to helplessness um, yeah, I can't think of I can't think of any reason why I want to go out and spend money on so-called uh, gun cleaners not when I have something that works as nicely as this uh, and for a fraction of the cost and not only that but I can use it for other things too so just take and wipe this out with your M16 brush so it'll reduce all that stuff and we'll just dry that off look at that bright and shiny as can be I mean just that it can't get any cleaner than that now I would have you know if I was trying to do that with hoppies and uh, cleaning patches I would have been spending a month of Sundays trying to get into all those crevices instead this thing just uh, this bath just cleaned it right out uh, automatically uh, no no need for any kind of uh, you know ultrasonic cleaners uh, you don't need to spend your money on that junk um, it's really not necessary. You got a good, if you got good solvents uh, that work, uh, it, it's all done automatically. It's just uh, that's why that's why solvents were invented. It, it didn't take it didn't take gun people to invent solvents. Solvents have been around a long, long time. So there we go, perfectly clean, perfectly uh, just like brand new. If I want, I can take a uh, I can take my shotgun rod and go in there with a with a patch and, and uh, wipe that off but it's really not necessary it, everything is just fine the way it is that'll dry out all by itself before we leave the uh, 
before we leave the chassis here, we'll clean out the uh, we'll clean out this fore end. I've got enough solvent on this rag here, I think, to clean out the fore end, get the get the carbon out of that. And if I think I need more solvent, it's easy enough to put in there. But that'll do it. Now, if you've got a um, if if you've got a uh, a wooden stock firearm, if you've got a wooden stock gun, be very very uh, judicious about how much uh, solvent that you get around and 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 lubricants because you know gun stocks are not made to uh, have oil put in them. Now you're going to say why uh, do they call them oiled stocks? Well, the oil is not a petroleum oil. It's usually it's linseed oil, which is a plant product. Um, and it's a, or, or sometimes it's tongue oil, T-U-N-G. Those are natural uh, plant products that have absolutely nothing to do with the oils that you might use in a firearm or in an engine or anything else. <clears throat> you don't want to use anything that will, any noxious oils that will, petroleum-based oils, because they're going to ruin the wood and they're going to cause that wood to split and uh, turn uh, basically dry rot it. Before I start cleaning the barrel, <clears throat> I, this is my, this is my, this is where the gas emits. There's two big holes in this shotgun right at the bottom of the tube here, and so naturally this is all fouled up. I can just take my uh, wetted rag and go in there and uh, clean it up. Don't make a big project out of it. It's just a just a matter of doing the same thing I did with the with the gas with the uh, gas rings on the other side. Just wipe them out, and then you can dry it. Okay, and then we'll start cleaning up the we'll start cleaning up the uh, shotgun barrel. Um, Wipe that off. Get most of get most of your gunk off the business end of the uh, breech here. And now I can now I've got a choice. I can use either the I can use either the uh, cleaning rod uh, with swabs, or I can use that uh, Hoppy's uh, boar snake. So let's take the boar snake out and uh, show you how simple that works. Okay, now this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we'll show you what the before product looks like. Uh, there's some dirt in there. You know, this is, um, I fired some uh, high velocity, one and a quarter ounce field loads, high brass loads. So, you know, it's not over dirty, but there's some, there's certainly some dirt in there that I want to remove before I put it into storage because dirt attracts, uh, I mean, uh, dirt attracts moisture. It's high and uh, because it attracts moisture then that can lead to uh, rusting. So pretty self-explanatory. Just drop the bob straight down from the breech end, always from the breech end if you can, and keep in mind that when we when we encounter the uh, when we encounter the front of the muzzle, uh, if you have a uh, if you have a tight choke in there, um, this is really really tight and this is why sometimes you might find it necessary, especially if you don't have some arm strength, or if you've got bad shoulders, you might find the uh, cleaning rod works a little bit more uh, efficiently. Um, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'd say that that's, I'd say that that's actually 100% clean, um, not 99%, I'd say that's 100% clean. Uh, it, did the, it did the whole job in one pass. Those, those, um, for rifles and sh for rifles and pistols, I don't, I don't use these things for my main cleaning because they really, they're just not efficient enough to uh, get the gun really clean, <coughs> get the barrel really clean. But when it comes to shotguns, these, these things really work terrific. Um, if you, if you have, if you have a tight choke and you can't pull it through, I suggest you simply change it out and put a uh, more open choke, you know, improved cylinder, or if you have a cylinder bore choke you can put in there, all the better. Whatever you do, never, ever, under any circumstances, clean your gun barrel with that uh, choke removed. You have to have a choke in there because you have to, that's the only way to protect those threads. 
With most chokes, they're very, very fine threads. The fitting is critical, and if you uh, damage those, if you damage those threads in any way, you're going to have a real problem, and you'll have to bring it to a gunsmith or send it back to the manufacturer for repair. So, always, uh, you know, protect that uh, thread by leaving a choke in there of some kind. But you can use a more open choke to uh, facilitate pulling it through. So that's all there is to it for that. So I've got I got the shotgun cleaned very, very simply. Um, there are. I mean, they're a breeze to clean up, especially if you're using a fishing solvent. Again, I was just using this, this stuff right here. It's just a clean strip. Uh, I've used all kinds of uh, mineral spirits through the years. Uh, that one there I like because it, it actually it works. It works a lot nicer. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have that uh, crummy. You know. It doesn't smell like a painted room, uh, so it's it's better. Um, and plus, it's low volatility, so I can just leave it. I can leave it on my workbench. And uh, again, this is just a. I got a strainer basket that I can uh, put. I can throw tiny parts in there from my AR-15, and they won't get lost. Uh, I got a dog bowl. This whole this whole package here. I think I paid seven dollars and a half for for five of these things. You know, you know, they were nested together at my local. Uh, job lot store, and at the same store I got this dog bowl for three dollars and a half. Uh, it's got a rubber bumper and rubber underside, so it doesn't slide around on my bench. Kind of cool stuff. So let's put the shotgun back together. Okay, we're just going to put this transmission into reverse and uh, reassemble everything. Now, if you have any, uh, if you have any loose matter down there and dust and things like that, uh, and if you haven't, if you haven't oiled this, there's no reason to oil this. Uh, just simply dust it off with a can of blow off or something like that. That'll keep it nice and clean. There's nothing in here that there's nothing in here that's a, a friction area. There's nothing in here that needs to be oiled. Don't stick oil in there, please. It's not. It's absolutely unnecessary. This this shotgun is now. I think it's about. I I got this the second year that the Maxis was out. It's been a quite a long time, uh, and it's a it, it's a gun that I've shot many hundreds of rounds through. Uh, it's just the same the same gun that I bought. It's nothing's changed. So uh, reinsert it straight in without the bolt. That's all you do. And I'll reinsert my pins. You don't have to you don't have to force them all the way through. Just get them started and then take your take your soft mallet and Make sure you have no dirt on the end of that mallet because you can really scar a gun's receiver. Lightly pass it, tap it through. If it doesn't tap in, don't force it because you probably got something going on in there. Uh, check your check your uh, trigger mechanism and make sure that you got things aligned. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, get the bolt put back in. Okay, I've cleared the deck here so we can get things together again. Um, I wanted to just show you, put these, put these two assemblies, the bolt and the carrier together. Now, to oil or not to oil? Well, that is the question. If, if you're going out in freezing cold weather on a, a duck hunting or pheasant hunting or deer hunting or something like that, and you, you, you got your shotgun, I, I really would strongly recommend that you, you know, consider your options. Uh, the option is if you oil, you could have a sluggish action that won't function properly or perhaps the firing pin will hold up and won't drop uh, cleanly on the primer. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a matter of having a gun which uh, doesn't fire correctly, losing out on the whole mission that you, you have to, you, you have to be mission conscious. You're going out hunting. You're not going out to preserve your gun. Your gun's not going to fall apart by not oiling it. Freezing weather can definitely uh, cause issues with oil. It can cause the viscosity to go up seriously and for parts to uh, stop functioning the correct way. So I would not oil uh, in most situations in the field. For the, mo for the most part, in the fall, that means I would not oil the gun. I'm only going to be firing it a few times. But if you're going to be taking it out to the skeet range or the trap range or something like that, or you're going to go out and have fun and blast away, then you can oil it a little bit. What do you oil? And how much do you oil? Just use use common sense. Um, I'm just using mineral oil. You don't need to use frog lube or anything like that. You know, I fire this gun virtually all the time, completely dry. 
this is the this is the amount of wear that has been uh, induced in this in this gun. It's just the polishing of the parkerizing. That's all it is. And I have fired hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds with this gun. So there's very little wear, and I and like I say, I very very rarely uh, oil it unless I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, say skeet shooting. A drop, a drop. That's all you need uh, on the contact surfaces. Never ever put never ever put oil on your firing pin. I don't care what anybody says, you never oil your firing pin. That's where that's where you're going to really have issues. Uh, I just had a gentleman write me and tell me about how he uh, missed out on a really nice really nice uh, deer because his uh, gun froze up on him. So just those contact surfaces, you don't have to apply it. You don't have to apply it uh, to every to every part. Um, as far as the slide rails go, uh, just again, one drop, one drop goes a, an awful long way. Just smear it on with your finger, that's all. And whatever residue you have, you can apply a little bit there. Anything that you see bright, that's the only thing that need, you need to oil. One drop. There we go. All right, so now we're going to, now we're going to nest the bolt and carry it together. Uh, that looks to me as if a little bit too much oil, so I'm going to take the liberty of daubing some of that off. I don't want to have that much on there because it collects it collects dirt, and dirt collects uh, dirt is an abrasive substance which will contradict what you're trying to do with the oil. The oil you're trying to reduce friction. Well, you know the best way to reduce friction is to not have dirt. Um, it's not a rapid cycling engine, the continuous, you know, combustion engine. So you just simply insert it into the uh, raceways. When you get it all the way in, make sure your bolt and uh, carrier are together. Insert your your bolt handle. Now that op rod has got to ride right into the buffer the buffer assembly, which is back inside here. It doesn't come out of the gun. It's it's a permanent fixture. It's about three eighths of an inch in diameter. Once you've got that. Uh, once you've got that bolt in, just pull the, we got to press the bolt release so to clear it and then straight, straight back. That's all there is to it. So to reverse the procedure again, remember, depress your, your bolt release, carefully slide, slide forward so that you don't crash into that uh, receiver. Uh, remove the, remove the bolt, take it out. To put it back in, straight back. You turn the bolt handle. To press your bolt release, and just cycle it straight back. So that's all there is to it. So now we'll go to put the uh, remainder of the gun back together. Uh, you can just slide this, slide this spring right on. Here is where I recommend uh, you can put a drop of LSA if you have it. If you don't have LSA, uh, plain mineral oil will work just fine. Uh, LSA just has a little bit better uh, holding ability. So uh, this is this is shaken up. A drop, a drop. I'll show you right like that. That's all there is to it. The size of that drop you can see. There's nothing to it. Uh, you don't want to put any more than that on because you're gonna, just going to have an unnecessary uh, dirt carbon gathering mess that will serve no particular purpose. Uh, you can you can uh, swab that around your fingers and insert your your gas your gas rings and that whole integrated assembly is installed now. Um, put, your, put your barrel back on. Uh, there's no there's nothing here to lubricate. Uh, all you're doing is making sure that your bolt is returned to the rear and engage the uh, magazine tube in the gas assembly and get the barrel started at the breech end and just simply slide them together carefully. Once you got them slid together, now take your fore end, pull it to the rear the same way that you did to relieve the pressure and push that push that lever down, or in the case of um, many shotguns, you screw on the end cap of your magazine tube or whatever way 
how it goes. And uh, finish it up like you would if this was anything else. You know, a job is only done when it's uh, cleaned up. So clean up any spillage of oil uh, that you might get on the gun. And that's it. And we've got a good, ready to go, functioning, beautiful shotgun. The Browning Maxis follows the A5 uh, in a couple of design features that uh, were carried forward, um, and they're very, very handy. Uh, one of them is the speed load feature. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they first start using the, uh, this design, they encounter issues with uh, using the, the speed load feature because they don't quite, they don't quite uh, understand the, the way the mechanism works. With most, <clears throat> with most shotguns, there's a magazine catch inside, uh, inside the beginning of the magazine tube, and you insert the shells until the rim of the shell uh, encounters that catch and holds it in place. Now these shot shells right here, these are not shot shells, these are dummy loads which I uh, obtained from the uh, Remington factory when I was there for the, uh, it even says dummy on the side. Um, these, these are color coded, the, uh, the, the heads are black. Uh, these, these three shells are uh, dummies that I uh, obtained from the Remington factory when I was at the uh, armor school uh, quite a number of years ago in Ilion, New York. There is no magazine catch uh, as it is with a uh, typical shotgun. Rather, there is a rather there's a simple gateway. You you put the shell you put the shell in and just simply let it go, and the shell flies back under spring for, uh, under the spring pressure of the magazine uh, tube, and it encounters a release bar right here. There's a there's a silver release bar right there. You can see on the on this side, and when it encounters that, it releases the bolt. So the way it works is quite is quite unique and quite ingenious. You just and this is this is awful handy if you you know you got fast flying birds. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you still got your shotgun to your shoulder, all you need to do is just simply reach up and just throw it right into the bottom. You can still use the same method that uh, standard auto loading shotguns or pump shotguns use, which is to uh, throw around into the side and uh, you know, depress your, depress your bolt release, and you can still do it that way. But that speed, that speed load feature is really, really slick. So again, you just, you just simply put it into the magazine and just let it go. Don't try to, don't try, there's no magazine catch in there, so don't try to find a magazine catch. It's not supposed to hold. It's, it, it's supposed to just allow that shell to snap backwards into the receiver and that's all it does is it just it just you let it go that's it nice there's a second there's a second feature that the maxis has as well as the uh, a5 and that's a magazine cutoff the magazine cutoff is a handy feature if you happen to be a uh, a field shooter and you're out you're out maybe bird hunting and all of a sudden you see a, you know a, a, a game opportunity uh, that is a different sort that you don't want to use bird shot with but maybe you want to use double o buck or maybe it's a fox you got some uh, you, you got some heavy uh, you got some heavy uh, say number three uh, buck shot or something like that you can uh, very easily take care of that dilemma rather than shucking all your rounds out and scaring them uh, you just simply uh, Pull that magazine cut off to the rear and pull your, eject that shell which is in the chamber, load the one that you desire to uh, fire and now you've got a, now you've inserted the uh, buckshot or whatever it is into your chamber and it, it held the other one in abeyance, that's all it does. And to, put, to restore that magazine to operation, just flip the switch forward. So reverse cuts it off, forward places it into uh, operation. So that's it. So we're empty. 
it's always fun for me to, uh, you know, teach you all these things that I know. Um, and I really appreciate all the comments that I get from people. That, uh, it, it really helps me out. Uh, that way I know what, that, what you want to see and uh, what you want to learn. So please tell your friends about us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Take care for now. God bless.